back now at 819 with the remarkable story of two people connected by a rare autoimmune disease that attacks the brain. New York Post writer Susanna Cahalan appeared on Today two years ago to talk about her condition that led to increasingly manic behavior. Luckily, the family of Emily Gavigan was watching. I remember clearly that it was uh, early 2009 in January when Emily went from being that very happy, go lucky person who had uh, seemingly had the world at her feet. She was a sophomore in college, and then all of a sudden, just a complete change in her personality. She she started to um, act strangely to us. We we noticed right away that there was something terribly wrong. 19-year-old Emily Gavigan became increasingly paranoid. I thought that trucks were following me and people are to get me and I ended up checking myself into the emergency room and then to a psychiatric hospital. After that stay they actually told us that they didn't really have a diagnosis but they were leaning towards schizophrenia. And they said she's never going to be able to work, she's never going to be able to uh, go back to school. My sister who lives in Wayne, Pennsylvania called me at work one morning and said I saw this incredible young woman named Susanna Cahalan who was on the Today Show this morning and she has this terrible disease that it sounds exactly like what Emily's been going through. Well I think that there are so many people out there, I mean who knows how many people out there are suffering from what I suffered from and are just not getting the diagnosis that they need. After watching the Today segment and reading more about Susanna's story, her parents told Emily's psychiatrist about Susanna's rare disease, anti-NMDAR encephalitis. But according to her parents, Emily's doctors didn't see the connection. Her condition became critical and a year after Emily first went to the hospital, she could no longer walk or talk. She got a uh, blood clot in her brain and became critical. Uh, she was dying. I remembered the article that Susanna had written in the New York Post, and I handed it to him and I asked him to test Emily. I said, would you please test her for this? And it was um, about an hour later that they put her on the helicopter and, and took, her, uh, took her to the University of Pennsylvania to be treated by the same doctor that determined what was wrong with Susanna and to save her life. Emily was on her way to a life-saving treatment just in the nick of time. Emily and Bill Gavigan are here with us this morning along with Susanna Cahalan, author of the new book, Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness. Good morning to you all. Right. Emily, let me begin with you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Um, I'm back in school. I'm going to be finished in December and I just am 100% better. I'm watching you watch some of the video footage in that piece where you're in the hospital. Do you recognize that person? Do you remember any of that? Um, obviously, the ventilator and that stuff, I, I don't remember, but it looks like a completely different person. Like, I feel like it's, I'm watching somebody else. And how did you put the pieces together then afterward? How did you remember what happened? Um, a lot of my, my dad and his notes and um, my family just telling me what happened. And I do remember some of it, but... Most of it is just completely gone. Bill, you sent a star, by all accounts, away to college. She was on the dean's list. She had a boyfriend. And then she came home at what point, and what did you notice? Well, I noticed that she was uh, just not herself. She uh, you know, went very quickly to uh, be being paranoid and uh, just uh, speaking rapidly and just, just could tell something was, uh, was off kilter. Was the frustration, though, knowing... I don't know what to do with this. This is not something I can identify quickly. Yeah, we, we, we took her to a doctor because it, it rapidly um, got worse. So we took her to a doctor right away. And, uh, you know, they thought it was some sort of, um, you know, mental health issue and started to treat her as such they, with, uh, you know, uh, different, different mood stabilizers, that sort of thing. Um, but she progressively got worse. And Susanna, tell me about the phone call then you get from Bill one day. Did it come completely out of the blue? Had, did you know anything about their story? I was actually at work and at the New York Post and uh, I got a phone call and I hear my name, you know, Susanna Cahalan. Is this Susanna Cahalan? And it was Bill on the other line and he told me the story about Emily and it just, oh, what an amazing experience. You called it one of the most life-affirming moments of your life. Why do you say that? Well, you know, you, you get into journalism to help people and when you hear that you know you went through such a horrible experience and it actually ended up helping someone and there's nothing better than that and bill what do you see today in your daughter now that we've come so far with her well i'm uh, i'm just so extremely proud because you know we can't know what these two went through with this disease uh, but um, i'm very proud of the way emily uh, approached uh, approached her recovery 
uh, it wasn't easy. It was very difficult. She had to relearn everything. She had to relearn how to walk, talk, uh, use a toothbrush, uh, the things that we take for granted. And Susanna went through a very similar experience. Uh, I'm very proud of Susanna as well for you know, being able to articulate this uh, originally uh, and come on the Today Show really you know, not long after she had gone through this terrible ordeal herself. And uh, it was just amazing that we, uh, my sister, uh, Mary, uh, had seen the Today Show that morning and uh, brought it together. It, you know, it took a little bit of time for us to convince the doctors uh, to, to go this direction. But um, it's, you know, thanks, to, uh, thanks to Susanna that Emily sits here right now. Emily, I'm watching the three of you sit here together over the last several minutes, and it's clear to me that there's a bond. You're holding hands at some point. How do you feel about Susanna? Susanna, I'm just so thankful for her. <laughs> um, if she hadn't been here, then I probably wouldn't be here. Um, and the way we can relate about what we've gone through, too, is really important to me. And Susanna, why do you want to be so out front about this? A lot of people would push this to the side and get on with their life. You've put out a book. <laughs> this is exactly why. I mean, she's sitting here right now, and I touched her life in a way, and she's touched mine, and th that's the reason why you do something like this. Well, we're so happy to see you both here healthy. Emily, Susanna, Dad. You got a good daughter on your hands. Thanks so much.